Hello and welcome to the NPTEL MOOC course on Economics of Health and Education. In week 11 uh, lesson 1, we will uh, study about health financing. Now, we have covered about uh, different aspects of health financing in the earlier uh, classes as well. However, we did not mention it as health financing. For example, in an earlier class, we studied about health equity and different aspects related to health equity. For example, we studied about uh, progressive health expenditures, proportional health expenditures, regressive health expenditures using the Kakwani index. Now, uh, the use of Kakwani index is one of the important ways of assessing uh, health financing or equity in health financing. Uh, similarly, in an earlier class, we have studied about universal health coverage or the principle of universal health coverage and how it is different from the concept of right to health. Uh, we also studied about how universal health coverage is brought about in the developed countries as well as in the developing countries. We have paid some attention to how, uh, what are the different progresses that have taken place uh, in the context of universal healthcare in India. Now, when we closely look at some of these issues, we will realize that we are essentially talking about health financing. However, health financing also needs to be considered as a different topic in itself from the point of view of health economics. And therefore, it is, um, it is imperative that we look at some of the important issues surrounding health financing as a separate class. So, in today's lecture, my focus will be on a few important issues uh, from the perspective of health economics on health financing. So, what we will cover in today's lesson are financing as a health system function. Now, there are various functions of health system. In uh, the earlier class, we studied about public health and what are the different uh, uh, different functions of public health, what are the different domains of public health. Now, uh, similarly, there are different domains of health system as well. For example, workforce or health workforce is one of the domains of health system or uh, creation of health infrastructure is one of the domains of health system. Similarly, health financing is one of the domains of health system. So, in this uh, lesson, we will study about about financing as one of the core functions of health system. Then we will look at the methods of financing. Uh, we will also understand uh, the, uh, a specific topic related to catastrophic health expenditures. There is a lot of discussion surrounding health expenditures or out of pocket expenditures in the developing countries context, particularly in the context of India because India is one of the countries which has very high rates of out of pocket expenditures and within out of pocket expenditures, now, there are regional variations with regard to the uh, incidence of out of pocket expenditure or the intensity of out of pocket expenditure which is captured by this technique of catastrophic health expenditures. So, we will pay some attention to catastrophic health expenditures which is very much a part of health financing studies. Then finally, we will conclude today's lesson with an overview of India's health financing methods and what are the key features of India's health financing model. So, let us uh, first begin our discussion from uh, the functions of health systems. Now, uh, given the country context, given the region context, there are various functions of health system uh, in as much as the domains of health systems that we are considering. So, for example, in the developed countries context, the health outcome indicators or the uh, health outcome indicators that are being pursued in the context of developed countries may be very different than in the case of developing countries. Then uh, accordingly, the health systems may be defined by the boundary of activities they encompass. So, a World Health Report of 2000 brought out by the World Health Organization defined health systems by the boundary of activities they encompass and of course, the boundary of activities will be very different for different sets of countries. Now, the WHO categorizes health system based upon four principal functions and three principal objectives which we will look at presently. Financing is one of the principal systems uh, function that comprises collecting, pooling and purchasing of resources. We will pay some attention to these in the uh, following slides. Now, you could look at this, uh, uh, this schematic uh, diagram where you will see that there are 
on the left hand side the, these are the uh, four core functions of the health system beginning with let us say service delivery or service provision there is resource generation which means uh, funding for investment and training there is financing or uh, health financing as a core function which includes an array of activities with regard to generation of resources then there is stewardship or governance issues surrounding the health system now all of these four core functions contribute to three important objectives of the health system which is responding to people's uh, needs uh, health outcomes as well as the fair financial contribution to the health system now if we go into a little detail of service provision service provision basically includes uh, delivering effective efficient and quality health services that meet the needs of the population so in the indian context for example we have a federal setup where we have states which are laggard states we have states which are uh, progressive states with regard to uh, health outcome indicators and given the kind of uh, setups that we experience in the state context uh, there can be various kinds of uh, delivery mechanisms uh, as far as uh, health outcomes are concerned or health delivery services are concerned resource generation is a uh, focuses attention on production of human physical and financial resources to sustain the system so resource generation obviously is related to the domain of health financing now often in the context of health financing we focus on uh, how to raise resources not so much on uh, the how the resources are being spent but in the context of equity in health financing uh, from the point of view of health economics we are also concerned not just about resource generation but also on whose health the uh, amount is being spent uh, so that it can be mapped to the uh, objective of uh, health outcome indicators or responsiveness to people's needs people's health needs so you have resource generation and health financing as two core functions uh, resource generation can be differentiated from health financing by focusing on production of human physical and financial resources to sustain the system for example how we are training our health workforce or how we are building health facilities uh, the health and wellness centers the primary health centers and so on health financing refers to uh, very uh, simplistically raising and managing the financial resources for health services uh, by ensuring access and financial protection and then you have stewardship which refers to governance basically overseeing the entire system by formulating policies regulations and frameworks that guide the system's performance and in the indian context health being a state subject there are uh, there are various kinds of uh, health policies that needs to be adhered to in the context of health uh, therefore we have state specific policies that go on to determine health outcomes as well let us also focus on the three core objectives of the health system one is of course improving health or health outcomes which ensures better health outcomes by reducing mortality morbidity and improving life expectancy and quality of life or the very important indicators of uh, health similarly responsiveness meeting people's expectations and needs uh, including respecting patients dignity confidentiality autonomy as well as providing prompt services so for example in the state context you will see that there are various kinds of uh, primary health centers or urban primary health centers that have come up closer to the slum areas where there is a lot of focus on uh, providing information about the citizens charter of what citizen should expect from healthcare services or health delivery uh, services from the urban primary health centers and what are the ways in which health workforce need to deal with people's expectations at the community level there is a lot of investment on the uh, on the uh, creation of an ecosystem which can deal with the changing expectations of people in urban and the rural areas similarly fair financial contribution is an important health system objective where the focus is on protecting individuals from financial hardship by ensuring health care uh, is affordable fair and equitably financed now we understand that health financing is an important core function of the health system apart from the three other core functions that we have studied uh, for example um, the uh, stewardship uh, uh, the governance uh, function the health delivery function or service delivery function and also the resource generation function now let us look at what are the different ways of uh, health financing or different methods of health financing now the basic function of health financing is collection of revenue 
and mostly in the context of countries or governments, we focus on collection of tax revenue. There is pooling of resources, uh, pooling of resources, pooling of risks and purchasing of goods and services. Revenue collection is the way health systems raise money from households, businesses and external sources. So, when we say that uh, the governments raise revenue for meeting the expectations of the health system, it could be from uh, collection of taxes, it could be from collection of uh, funds from businesses towards meeting health needs of the population or it could be uh, depending upon households own resources and ensuring that quality healthcare services are made available to people where people spend out of pocket on uh, their health and also uh, resorting to external uh, sources for uh, funding. Now, pooling deals with the accumulation and management of revenue so that members of the pool share collective health risks uh, which can protect individual pool members from large unpredictable health expenditures. Similarly, purchasing refers to mechanisms used to secure services from public and private providers. In the context of India, uh, there is a lot of uh, introduction of services where uh, private players, for example, non-governmental organizations or uh, corporates have been invited to uh, share the responsibility of providing diagnostic services, medicine services and the like. So, therefore, these are examples of how public-private partnerships are uh, encouraged for uh, purchasing of different kinds of um, resources uh, for maintenance of the health system. Now, one must realize that all of these functions involve complex interactions among a range of players in the health sector. So, while it seems like a simplistic view of how health financing takes place and what are the different ways in which health financing takes place, we must realize that given the federal structure of the state, all of these functions are very complex, uh, require complex interactions between different players in the health sector. Now, this is one schematic uh, figure of how health financing functions uh, interact with each other. This is by Schieber and Maida 1997. So, if you look at service provision here, there are public providers and there are private providers, but resource allocation may take place through government agencies, through sickness funds, there are private insurance organizations, employers, individuals and households. Uh, similarly, revenue collection, there can be taxes, public charges, sales of natural resources, uh, grants, uh, there are uh, private revenue collection that happens through private insurance, communities, out of pocket. So, all of these together, uh, taken together form what is called the health financing or um, generation of revenue, generation of funds for health financing. Now, while we are discussing about health financing as a core function and while we understand that there are different methods of raising resources or raising funds uh, which uh, contribute to health financing, we must also understand that there are certain determinants of health financing and not all uh, countries or not all formations are equally uh, successful in raising the required amount of uh, health resources or uh, financing for health. Now, there are various determinants of health financing and of course, it is again a complex amalgamation of institutional, demographic, socio-economic, environmental, external and political factors. One of the ways in which we can understand the determinants of health financing is this. So, you have the total revenue potential which basically includes collection of revenue from public and private sources, public including the government the private including private organizations or individuals or communities and so on. Now, if you look at all of these arrows here, these are basically the broad determinants of health financing. For example, let us begin with demographic profile. So, given the kind of household structure that we have in a certain region or a state or a country, uh, that we can determine the dependency ratio of households within a country and the, uh, that along with the rate of urbanization and aging population can give us a demographic uh, profile that helps us to determine what is the revenue potential, whether we can raise revenue from individuals or not, whether we can uh, raise revenue from the households or not and how much uh, we can raise uh, resources from the demography of the country, given the demographic profile of the country that can contribute to health financing. Similarly, there are various environmental factors, whether 
uh, it is a country which is more prone to natural disasters uh, or whether there are various other kinds of emergencies, civil emergencies, uh, war and conflicts, etc. There may be other environmental exigencies that directly influence the capacity of the country concerned to be able to finance uh, health uh, outcomes. Similarly, administrative capacity of a country also has a huge influence on the revenue potential. Uh, we can refer it to as the political structures. So, whether there is decentralization or not, whether there is a smooth policy process for implementation of different kinds of programs for policy formulations, the stability of political institutions also plays an important role in the revenue potential of the health financing system. Economic activities, needless to say, is a very important uh, uh, determinant of uh, health financing. Uh, the whether or not we have a flourishing labor market or whether we have very high rates of unemployment and underemployment, whether we are more of a formal economy or an informal economy directly contributes to the understanding of whether we have a developed insurance market or not. Similarly, what is the uh, amount of public deficits that we have in uh, countries, the levels of corruption, uh, unionization, labor market structures, these are all important influences or determinants of revenue potential with regard to healthcare financing. Similarly, uh, important uh, foreign directives, whether it is of World Health Organization or other international agencies, the external pressures that we have from other international agencies also have an important contribution to revenue potential. Social values or the support for welfare state, uh, the very foundations based upon which the welfare state is constructed also has an important contribution to the revenue generation mechanism for health financing. So, what we have uh, studied so far is to understand that health financing is an important core function of the health system. We have also seen that uh, um, there are different methods of health financing uh, and then we also saw that, that there are different influences or determinants of health financing. Now, let us very briefly also look at equity in health financing, but as I mentioned in the beginning of the class that in the earlier classes we have uh, uh, delved into the details of equity in health financing, but it is beneficial to understand that in the larger discussion of health financing, also we uh, have pay a lot of attention to equity issues in health financing. We have studied about universal health coverage and we know that UHC is about ensuring that everyone has access to the needed health services of sufficient quality and to be effective without any financial hardships to potential service users. So, minimizing financial hardships for the sake of health uh, benefits is one of the important objective of introducing the idea of universal health coverage because empirical studies across all countries have shown us that the financial hardships that individuals or households uh, take uh, to spend on their health expenses becomes an important, uh, it is a detriment to their uh, health outcomes. So, fairness or equity in health financing is critical to ensuring UHC and equity in health financing is generally about financing health services according to your ability to pay. So, it is the uh, classic equity efficiency trade-offs that we talk about in the context of health economics where although we pursue the objective of efficiency uh, with respect to uh, health financing, keeping in mind the human capital approach, but we also need to ensure that equity is uh, maintained as far as health financing is concerned because that has um, uh, from the purely economics point of view, it has important impact on health outcomes and health outcomes determine uh, influence or has an impact on productivity of a country. So, equity in financing has to do with how revenues are raised and not with how money is uh, spent. In the context of equity, we have looked up the Kakwani index earlier, which basically compares the distribution of health payments across households ordered according to the socio-economic status from poorest to richest with the distribution of household income or total expenditure. And Kakwani index uh, tells us for individual financing mechanisms uh, that it can be combined to assess how progressive the overall health financing system is. So, you can look at it as some kind of a summary uh, uh, slide on the Kakwani index, the ways in which the burden of health financing may be distributed. There may be progressive financing, there may be proportional financing or regressive financing. Depending upon the modern welfare state uh, definition 
that we uh, tend to pursue in a country context, we uh, align ourselves with the kind of financing mechanisms. But from a theoretical perspective, progressive financing is basically a mechanism whereby higher income uh, groups contribute a higher percentage of their income to health payments than the lower income groups and it is represented by a positive uh, Kakwani index. Proportional financing is uh, whereby everyone contributes the same percentage of income to funding the health system irrespective of their income level. So, uh, and it is represented by an index of 0, index value of 0. So, you can see that proportional financing in an otherwise unequal society can actually be regressive in nature. Uh, similarly, regressive financing is where low income groups contribute a higher percentage of their income to health payments than higher income groups and it is represented by a negative Kakwane index value and higher the negative number is the more regressive the financing mechanism is. So, in the context of um, studies or research studies that uh, tend to assess what kind of a financing system we have, whether it is in a region context, when I say region context, it it could be any uh, subnational formation uh, below the country level. So, you could look at states, you could look at districts, you could even look at villages or urban formations, you could look at urban slums and uh, you would see that one of the ways of assessing whether equity in health financing has been maintained or not is to look up the health expenditures that people are doing and uh, given their ability to pay how much they are uh, spending on uh, healthcare services. Uh, this is another way of looking at catastrophic health expenditures which we will do in a little while. But this is one of the ways of um, assessing the overall health financing system at a uh, at an aggregate level. So, when I say aggregate level, it could be at a subnational level or the national level. Now, financing methods in the earlier classes also we have looked up uh, some methods of financing. For example, insurance is an important form of financing. It is a private, uh, a private insurance model is a private uh, form of financing health. A social insurance health mechanism, for example, the Ayushman Bharat that has been introduced in India is a form of social health insurance. So, some of these different forms of financing we have taken up in different contexts. For example, SHI or social health insurance we studied when we discussed about universal health coverage and the progresses that India has made towards UHC or a sort of contrasting it in the context of universal rights to health and so on. But let us also summarize what are the different financing methods in the context of health financing policy. Now, health policy debate actually focuses mostly on how to generate more funds for healthcare and it ignores the financing and payment methods chosen. Uh, but uh, one must understand that the method of payment is also very important because it has far reaching consequences on the fiscal capacity of a country concerned. So, these choices have profound impacts on the outcomes and performances of a health system as well. And generally there are six alternative financing methods that are available which are government budget, social insurance, private insurance, community based insurance. Then we have individual health savings accounts HSA. Now, this is mostly discussed in the context of developed countries. In the developing countries, we do not have many uh, case studies or experiences to share with regard to individual health savings accounts, but these are also one of the important uh, ways of uh, uh, financing and then of course, there are patients paying out of pocket. Now, two of these six methods of financing that I just mentioned, uh, tax financing and universal uh, social health insurance. They pool the health risks of an entire population into one common insurance pool uh, to improve social equity. Uh, individual health savings accounts and direct out of pocket expenses do not pool risks. They are basically dealing with the uh, health expenses of the individual. They are not pooling risks. Similarly, community based insurance or CBHI as is um, popularly known as, they pool risks only within a community but does not address the differences of income and health conditions among communities. There are employment based group health insurance that pools the risks of workers within a particular company, but excludes the unemployed, disabled and retired. 
and there are uh, specific uh, researches that are conducted within each of these uh, components, SHIs, uh, direct out of pocket expenses, community based insurance or employment based group health insurance uh, that pools the risks of workers in that, uh, in that company concerned. So, some of these uh, uh, there are extensive studies, uh, some are under research, some are over research, but there are extensive studies in each of these uh, components. Let me based upon this discussion on methods of financing uh, sort of summarize uh, how health financing can take several forms based on the sources of revenue and the method of payment. So, one is general taxation, here this is funded by government revenues through taxes. This is often used in systems like the National Health Service in the UK, uh, healthcare is provided based on need rather than the ability to pay. Then you have social health insurance which is mandatory insurance contributions made by workers, employers and sometimes by the government. These funds are pooled and used to pay for health care. Examples include uh, Germany and Japan's health systems. Recently in India we have an example of the uh, Ayushman Bharat health insurance program which is uh, implemented in many states and still not implemented in a few states. You have private health insurance which is individuals or employers purchasing health insurance from private providers. Premiums are based on risk and there may be significant variation in coverage and uh, access and this system is uh, highly prevalent in the uh, United States. We have community based health insurance uh, schemes which are basically voluntary health insurance managed by the community often for low income populations and contributions are typically small and pooled to cover health care expenses. We have out of pocket expenses wherein individuals pay directly for health care services at the point of use and this is common in countries without a robust insurance or public health system, but it can lead to financial hardships for uh, patients. And then finally, we have donor financing which is external aid or funding from international organizations or foreign governments uh, which is common in low income countries and this can supplement other financing mechanisms. Now, all of these financing methods are usually utilized by specific financing systems. So, basic health financing functions are generally embodied in three stylized health uh, financing system models the national health service kind of a model which we have seen in the case of UK where there is compulsory universal coverage, national uh, general revenue financing and national ownership of health sector inputs. You have social insurance model where there is compulsory universal coverage under a social security system financed by uh, employee and employer contributions to non-profit insurance funds with public and private ownership of sector inputs. Then you have private insurance which is employer based or individual purchase of private health insurance and private ownership of health sector inputs including hospitals. Um, as for equity in financing studies have shown that tax financing tends to be the more equitable than social health insurance in distribution of cost burden. Uh, next is community based insurance and private group health insurance with uh, household savings account and direct out of pocket payments being the least equitable. Uh, government emerges as the preferred choice taking the dominant role in financing health care through tax revenue or universal social health insurance. High income countries have all depended on government uh, sources of expenditures except for the United States which is dominantly a privatized health system. Uh, lower income countries uh, do as much as possible according to their fiscal capacity supplemented by uh, donor funds. So, so far in the class uh, we have studied about some of the important methods of financing and we have uh, centered the discussion on financing as one of the core functions of health system and we have looked at uh, some of the different models of healthcare financing which we have also earlier covered in the earlier lessons, but it was important for us to uh, have a holistic understanding about how to bring all of these together for the purpose of assessment of health financing systems. Now, in the second part of this lesson, I want to focus on this concept of out of pocket expenditure and more specifically on the concept of catastrophic out of pocket expenditure. Now, out of pocket expenditure most uh, very simply refers to the amount of money that individuals spend from their own pockets on their uh, health needs. Uh, why the concept of out of pocket expenditure or catastrophic health expenditure has 
uh, got lot of attention in the context of developing countries is that uh, we suffer from uh, various kinds of diseases which have uh, negative externalities. So, for example, we suffer from infectious diseases and infectious diseases have their grounding in the economic and social structures of the country. And when we um, suffer from uh, diseases which has its roots in the uh, social structure of the community within which we live, then it becomes very important for us to understand who should be financing for our health needs. And if uh, financing for health needs is largely from out of pocket expenses and if it is eating into the uh, funds that is that needs to be kept aside for other purposes, then it also apart from being an individual uh, problem, uh, individual household problem becomes a social problem as well. So, it is in this context that uh, various international agencies, uh, primarily World Health Organization has focused a lot on uh, theorizing about out of pocket expenditures or coming up with different kinds of models or assessments as to how we want to calculate catastrophic health expenditures and all of these also build on to the argument or uh, build on to the demand for universal health coverage in different countries. So, now, having understood what are out of pocket expenditures, let us pay some attention to what are catastrophic out of pocket expenditures and why do we say uh, when does healthcare expenditure become catastrophic. So, out of pocket expenditures are termed catastrophic when they impose a financial burden which is so large that they result in significant hardship for individuals and households, often pushing them into poverty or preventing them from accessing necessary healthcare. In health economics, catastrophic health expenditure occurs when a household's OOP or out of pocket expenditure uh, spending on healthcare exceeds a certain threshold of their income or consumption and leaving insufficient resources for other basic needs. So, there are a few criteria and thresholds. Typically, they are defined using two key approaches. One is an income based approach and the other is a consumption or capacity to pay approach. So, what is the income based approach? Income based approach uh, for assessing OOP expenditures are considered catastrophic when they exceed a certain percentage of households income. So, this threshold can vary, but it is often set as 10 percent or 20 percent. So, if health expenditures of a household uh, crosses 10 percent of the total household income or 20 percent of the total household income, then we will categorize those households as very vulnerable households vulnerable to uh, health impacts or uh, households which are incurring catastrophic health expenditures which is surely going to hamper their everyday needs that needs to be uh, kept aside for other social sector expenditure or other social expenditures. Consumption or capacity to pay approach, this is a method which compares uh, spending to a household's consumption expenditure or capacity to pay. So, of the total consumption expenditure, so for example, let us say a household is spending on education, on housing, on transportation, on uh, uh, putting aside uh, some uh, money for future risks and so on. So, of the total uh, expenditure, consumption expenditure that is being carried out by the households, how much is being spent on uh, health? And here if uh, OOP health expenditure exceeds a certain threshold of the household's non-food spending, it is classified as catastrophe and the commonly used thresholds are 25 percent, 30 percent or 40 percent of non-food consumption. So, non-food consumption here means uh, consumption made on housing, education, transportation, electricity and so on. So, excludes food expenditure, total household consumption expenditure can be divided into food expenditure and non-food expenditure. So, then we see if uh, health expenditure exceeds uh, 25 percent or 30 percent or 40 percent of total non-food expenditure, then it can be categorized as catastrophic uh, out of pocket expenditure based upon the capacity to pay approach. So, let us look at a small example of the income based method. We have just seen that this method calculates the proportion of a household's income spent on healthcare and compares it to a predefined threshold. So, here the catastrophic health expenditure is out of pocket health expenditure upon total household income multiplied by 100 
and if this percentage exceeds say 10 percent then it will be considered catastrophic. So, here we have taken a very simple example if a household spends 500 on health care out of a total income of 4000 then 12.5 percent is the health expenditure which means that it has exceeded the cutoff of 10 percent. So, it falls under the catastrophic health expenditure category. Now, these uh, calculations might look very simple, but often in the context of collection of data when we are collecting data from the households, uh, these have to be calculated at the household level uh, to be able to understand equity in healthcare financing. So, it is very data intensive, it requires a lot of data from the households, we need data on total incomes of the households, uh, incomes from different sources because uh, in the Indian setup we have more uh, informal sector employment or non-formal sector employment. So, there are different sources of households incomes and after being able to collect all of these information then we need to carry out these exercises to be able to assess equity in health financing. Similarly, the consumption method uh, this focuses on a household's ability to pay for healthcare after accounting for basic needs usually it is food because food is one of the component that individuals cannot survive without having. So, the basic minimum that is required for food is kept aside and uh, the calculation removes food expenses from total income or total consumption to determine the household's disposable income. So, which is why we calculate this from total non-food expenses. So, here uh, catastrophic health expenditure is given by the out of pocket expenditure on health upon total household income minus food expenditure and usually we set a threshold of about 40 percent for developing countries. So, if a household spends uh, more than somewhere around 25 percent to 40 percent then we say that they are uh, incurring catastrophic health expenditures. So, going by this example uh, we have deducted food expenses from the total consumption expenditure and this comes to 20 percent. So, this does not qualify as uh, catastrophic health expenditure, but these are some of the ways in which we can assess household level data uh, when we are doing uh, research on uh, health um, equity or equity in health financing. So, just to summarize about catastrophic health expenditures, we define a threshold. You can choose a threshold for what percentage of income or capacity to pay constitutes catastrophic health expenditure. This is an important exercise because it depends upon where you are conducting your study. If you are conducting your study in a setup which has very high rates of food inflation or it has very uh, the general level of prices are very high then you will need higher cutoff. But if you are conducting your uh, research in a locality or a region where general level of prices are very low then you might want to have a lower cutoff. So, you collect household data. So, obtain data on household income, healthcare spending and in the case of capacity to pay method household spending on food and other basic needs. Then you apply the formula and then you aggregate data for a population level analysis, calculate the proportion of households with catastrophic health expenditure to understand the overall impact on the population. In terms of interpretation, there are two important uh, calculations we do. One is the incidence of catastrophic expenditure and second is the intensity of catastrophic expenditure. Sometimes we uh, the incidence of catastrophic expenditure may not be very high, but the intensity may be very high. So, depending upon the case context, we can pay our attention or put more weight on one thing or the other. Now, what is incidence? This is the basically the proportion of households that experience catastrophic health expenditure in a population. It would not be wrong to interpret that if in a given region the proportion of households experiencing catastrophic health expenditure is very high, then obviously it requires some kind of an intervention from the public sector for provision of uh, health inputs for, uh, whether it is in the form of hospitals or infrastructure or healthcare workforce or more and more uh, health resources so that people can have access to these resources uh, translating into um, uh, positive health outcomes. A higher incidence indicates a greater financial burden from healthcare costs. Similarly, intensity of catastrophic expenditure measures how far a household exceeds the catastrophic threshold. 
it reflects the depth of the financial hardship faced by those who experience catastrophic expenditure. These are the common thresholds by the household income method, 10% is a common threshold. By the capacity to pay method, 40% is a, a common threshold. So, 40% for measuring intensity of catastrophic expenditure and intensity, uh, if we can take 10% of household income, it gives us a good measure of what is the distribution of uh, households that are experiencing catastrophic expenditures. Now, in the final part of this lesson, uh, let us uh, pay some attention to India's health financing system. By now, uh, uh, learners must have realized that in India, we have a mixed kind of a health financing system where we have the public sector and we have the private sector. We have households um, uh, spending uh, or households uh, incurring a lot of out of pocket expenditure on their health needs as well. So, when we are assessing India's uh, financing system, health financing system, it is uh, complex. We have to take into uh, consideration the complex, uh, the complexity of interactions between different players, the private and the public. Within the private, you have different sets of players. Within the government, we have different kinds of partnerships. Uh, we have solely government financed uh, institutions and we have different kinds of partnered institutions that uh, provide service delivery through government uh, mechanisms. So, we can say that India's health financing system is characterized by a mix of public and private funding mechanisms with a heavy reliance on out of pocket expenditure as well as efforts to expand government funded health insurance. And this system aims to provide healthcare to a large and diverse population but faces challenges related to equity, financial protection and access to quality services. Let us focus first on the public health financing system which is basically government spending on health. Uh, most of it happens to general taxation. Government of India both at the central and state level funds a significant portion of healthcare through general taxation and this financing supports public healthcare facilities from primary health centers to tertiary uh, hospitals. But overall public spending on healthcare in India remains relatively low at around 1.3 to 1.5 percent of GDP which is below the WHO recommendation of 5 percent. So, as a country as a whole, our overall spending on health as a percentage of GDP is very low. But most of this funding is used to run government hospitals and health centers and to implement the flagship national health mission which is targeting rural and urban areas with public health initiatives. Healthcare services and public facilities are often free or heavily subsidized. Uh, though underfunding has led to issues such as poor infrastructure, limited access and long waiting times. But even here different state governments have different experiences and we need to uh, look up the um, case studies that are emerging from different states to be able to understand the uh, functioning of healthcare services uh, particularly with regard to public facilities. Within the public health financing domain we have uh, various central and state government schemes uh, we have uh, covered in some detail in the universal health care uh, lecture on uh, the central and state schemes. So, you have uh, Janarogya Yojanas and then you have state specific insurance uh, schemes uh, in different states. The private health financing uh, domain mostly constitutes of out of pocket expenditure and this is a major challenge in India's health care financing. Uh, which is uh, very high levels of out of pocket expenditure. Recent data tells us that out of pocket expenditures uh, after the introduction of the Ayushman Bharat program has been declining. Uh, however, uh, as I said that these need to be assessed based upon the empirical studies from different uh, states because uh, there are state specific issues with regard to the implementation of these programs. But out of pocket expenditure spending by individuals accounts for over 60 percent of total health expenditures in India which is much higher than the global average. And where are we spending on? We are mostly spending on consultations and hospitalizations in private facilities on medicines which represent a substantial portion of uh, uh, OOP spending and diagnostic services and other health services. So, high OOP expenditures often lead to catastrophic health expenditures for families and push millions into poverty in each year. So, health poverty or health related poverty or health expenditures contributing to impoverishment is an important uh, policy issue, is an important uh, social problem in the context of India. 
Of course, we have private health insurance. Private health insurance in India is growing, but it remains limited in its coverage. It is primarily used by the urban, middle and upper classes, with companies often offering insurance to employees as part of their benefits. Private health insurance coverage is relatively low, covers only about 10 to 15 percent of the population and most of the policies are concentrated in urban areas. Private insurance tends to cover hospitalizations but often excludes outpatient care, diagnostics and preventive care, again leading to continued high OOP uh, cost. So even if you may buy as individuals or households, even if we may purchase uh, we may invest on insurance premiums, health insurance premiums, they mostly cover hospitalizations without covering outpatient care, diagnostics and preventive care, which ultimately adds on to the risk of higher order diseases requiring hospitalizations. Social health insurance is limited in India, but it is available for certain segments of the population. You have the employee state insurance scheme, central government health schemes and so on. Recently, the Ayushman Bharat, which is a government sponsored insurance program, it does not strictly fall under the social health insurance program, but it has some uh, social benefits. CBHI or community based uh, health insurance scheme, these are taken care of by NGOs and community groups. They offer community based health insurance schemes in rural or underserved areas and these schemes pool funds from members to cover basic health care costs. This coverage is typically limited in scope focusing on primary health care and preventive services, but they play an important role in providing financial protection for poor rural population where formal insurance coverage is lacking. Then uh, we have uh, external funding and donor support. Most developing countries, Asian, African and Latin American countries have some donor support. India also receives external donor funding from international organizations and bilateral agencies, uh, particularly for specific public health programs, for example, tuberculosis, African countries receive a lot of uh, funding for HIV AIDS. For maternal and child health in India, we have received a lot of funding from bilateral agencies. So donor funding forms uh, an important but a very small proportion of total health financing in India, uh, mainly for targeted health interventions. Now let us summarize this discussion by highlighting the key features of India's health financing system. So if we have to understand what are the uh, important features of India's health financing system, these are a few things that should appear in the discussion on uh, India's health financing system. First is that it is a mixed system. We follow a mixed system uh, because we have both public and private sectors and they coexist. Public health care is financed through taxation, general taxation, but it is underfunded. And therefore, there is a heavy reliance on private health care services. Private expenditures in India are mostly uh, out of pocket. The out of pocket expenditures dominate the health financing uh, landscape. And therefore, we uh, discuss a lot about equity issues in the context of health financing. Uh, health insurance, private health insurance in the context of India is expanding. Uh, there are limited insurance players, but there is an expansion. The government has made efforts to expand health insurance coverage for low income populations through various kinds of schemes uh, and there has been an important step towards UHC or the universal health coverage. Though there are different challenges in the context of service quality, access and financial stability. As I mentioned that uh, within the uh, key features of India's health financing system, one of the important features is that of high out of pocket spending. So this is one of the biggest challenges uh, to reduce high levels of OOP expenditures. This despite the fact that insurance coverage is increasing, we are one of the countries with very high OOPs in the world. There is a huge urban rural divide in the context of India. Health financing in India reflects significant disparities between uh, urban and rural areas. Urban populations generally seem to have better access to private insurance and healthcare services. Rural population are uh, depend on under-resourced uh, public services and are forced to pay out of pocket for uh, private care. And therefore, one also needs to look at the morbidity and mortality outcomes with respect to rural and urban areas. We generally see that the health outcome indicators are adverse for rural areas. Public-private uh, partnerships are an important uh, feature of uh, India's changing uh, health uh, financing landscape. Uh, India is increasingly relying on public-private partnerships in healthcare, particularly in the areas of diagnostics and hospital services and medical education. 
and the goal is to uh, leverage the private sector efficiencies to complement public sector health services. However, uh, there needs to be uh, detailed studies on how public private expenditures or public private financing mechanisms are working out at the subnational levels and we have very few uh, experiences, uh, experience sharing from the states in the public domain. Uh, there needs to be more research in these areas that can contribute to health governance models as far as the changing health financing landscape is concerned. So, let us summarize uh, today's class. There are uh, three important uh, uh, discussions that we had in today's class. One is we looked up uh, health financing as an important core function of a uh, health system uh, because we talk about various domains within the health system. And in this uh, changing uh, the evolution of health sector, if I may, uh, if the kind of changes that we are experiencing in the health sector, health financing has emerged as one of the important domains of the health sector. And therefore, we need to sort of center stage the role of health financing. But health financing follows different kinds of models and the models are very specific to the country context or the subnational context. Given the for example, disease profiles also have an important role to play with regard to what kind of financing model a country needs to adopt. So, uh, so therefore, center staging uh, health financing is one of the core function, but we also have to understand that there is a mapping of these functions to objectives and uh, there are various influences or determinants of health financing that needs to be understood in the context of health financing. So, it is a broad area of study that requires lot of research that needs to come from the subnational studies and there is a lot of scope for health researchers to work in this area. Uh, within all the uh, issues regarding to health financing, we particularly focused on this concept of catastrophic health expenditures or catastrophic out of pocket expenditures because out of pocket expenditures are one of the leading sources of uh, healthcare financing, private healthcare financing in India's context. And uh, often in the context of uh, smaller regions, uh, at the village level or at the urban level, different kinds of community formations, we need to look at equity issues in financing. So, we try to understand uh, the thresholds with regard to catastrophic health expenditures. Then finally, we looked up the uh, methods of financing in India. Uh, there were a few reputations in the context of how financing takes place in the case of India, but it is important to put all of them together in the larger context of health financing. And we also looked at some of the key features of health financing uh, system in uh, India. I have referred to uh, various uh, documents from the World Bank and uh, health financing and equity frameworks. Uh, the WHO uh, documents on health financing and uh, since the PPTs are being shared with all of you, you may want to look up some of these links and there are a few other links that have not been shared here. But if you are interested to look up more deeply into some of the issues, please put up your questions on the portal and we will take it up. So, uh, till the next class, thank you. Mm -hmm.